Hey, 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 Med School Made Easy. Today we're going to talk about Meckel's diverticulum and some clinically important points. Uh, what a Meckel's diverticulum is, is if you look at a patient's cecum or the start of their small intestine and they have tinea with a little appendix, they have an ileocecal valve and they have a piece of ileum a little bit back on the ileum, some people have a small, true, not a false, diverticulum which is the obliterated or remnant of the omphalomesenteric duct or the vitiline duct. What this is, is this used to connect uh, the patient's midgut and small intestine to the, uh, to the embryo or to the uh, uh, amniotic sac in development. And uh, most people this regresses, but in some people it sticks around. But uh, in any case, the way they remember um, the different points is the rule of twos, which is why I wrote it up there. And, and this is really helpful when you try and remember the higher points of Meckel's diverticulum. Another interesting point is, if you have a groin hernia, uh, there can be a time where a Meckel's diverticulum goes into the uh, patient's groin hernia. Okay? And that is important because it has an eponym, and that eponym is, uh, I'm going to butcher it, so whatever, uh, Littres or Liters, L-I-T-T-R-E-S, or whatever the French guy's name is. Uh, that's, uh, I'm sorry, how to pronounce that, I don't know, I'm ignorant, and um, that's the, the eponym for that type of hernia that can occur, uh, that sometimes comes up when you're talking about this uh, clinical situation. In any case, uh, let's see, so the rule of twos, so 2% two of the population has one of these, so not everyone, 98% of people don't, and then it's super rare for it to be symptomatic because only 2% of that amount are symptomatic, so 2% of 2%, Pretty rare deal. Uh, it has a two to one male to female predominance. So you're probably gonna see this more frequently in males. Um, it usually shows up if it's going to at two years old. If it's going to be symptomatic, it's gonna be on the patient's two. Um, it usually happens within or about two feet of the uh, of the ileocecal valve, that's another two. And then usually when it is there, it's about two inches long. Uh, so it's two inches long, it's two feet away. Um, there's classically two types of tissue that show up. Uh, because again, this is ophalomesenteric duct, this isn't necessarily small bowel. And the, the ones that show up are gastric mucosa, and pancreatic tissue. Um, those are the two types of tissue that you usually find inside of these. That's clinically important for a couple different reasons. Number one, the gastric mucosa that's there in approximately 60% of these diverticulum um, can be easily found using a technetium scan. A lot of people call it a Meckel scan. So, uh, you know, you, you send someone to nuclear medicine and they get a cross-sectional imaging that involves uh, technetium in their bloodstream that then preferentially gets picked up by the gastric mucosa so you can see if the patient has a Meckel's or not if, they, if you're unclear about the diagnosis. Um, the other thing is, another thing about this ectopic tissue is that it can cause um, ulceration um, because you know if you're making gastric juices in the distal small bowel or the ileum that's not used to seeing those juices, um, you can cause ulceration. And sometimes people talk about, so if this is your small bowel, this is your little Meckel's, and you're making HCL, um, the ulceration or the problem and the pain and the bleeding is going, not going to be in the diverticulum, but actually on the contralateral side, which makes sense, right? If you're making HCL, you're making it dripping down and it's collecting here. This is going to be your ulcer. Not actually the diverticulum itself will be inflamed. Um, these can be clinically important. They can be symptomatic, painful, cause bleeding, etc. And what you do for that is uh, most of the patients come in and most people think they have appendicitis. You take them for a diagnostic laparoscopy, and if this is the case, you resect it. Most people would say in kids, if you find a Meckel's diverticulum, even if it's asymptomatic, you would resect it. Um, a lot of people have different opinions about that, and especially in adults, if it's an asymptomatic, non-inflamed Meckel's, usually we leave them. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, that's Meckel's diverticulum. Just remember rule of twos, and you're pretty much halfway there. So. All right, guys, that's going to be easy. Thanks for watching.